Smith, Tyus in the circle. Butler, Florida, for a trip to the Final Four, and we're underway from New Orleans. And here's Walker. The Butler opens up in man-to-man. -man, trying to get some movement, they invert their bigs. Boynton had three points at halftime, exploded in the second half. Tyus was the man for this Gator team, and he hits his first shot. Reggie, that's always a good sign. Well, good pick-and-pop action there by Tyus right there. He can have his range up to about 15, 17 feet. Tyus, 19 points, 17 rebounds. In their win over BYU, he was 8 of 9 from the field. Now Mack. Watch Van Zandt. He got off to a great start against Wisconsin. Nine points in the first half. He has it right now. Very important in this first half that Butler get off to a good start. They play much better when they're ahead. They don't have the type of personnel as Mack knocks down a bank three from about 28 feet. Straight on. And he had Boynton all in his lap, too. Challenged it all the way. Butler does not have the offensive personnel if they're down to come back in a ball game. Macklin, baseline, finds a cutting Parsons to the bucket. Rims out, ripped down. But Macklin had the shot on the baseline unimpeded and gave it up to Parsons for more difficult. Stigall, long rebound, Van Zandt, Mack rising fire, and hits. Shelvin Mack, folks, is a pro. He's got incredible poise, and his skill level continues to grow. Looks like he's having one of those early evenings like he had against Pitt in the third round when he started with those eight three-pointers. He had 30 points in that game. Inside, Macklin, jump hook. And that's what you like to see from your bigs. Yeah, everyone's looking inside if you got a white shirt on. That's your first look. Make sure that you get guys clean looks inside. Looks like Brad Stevens going to go to his bench early, bringing Ronald Norred. Remember, Norred started in the title game for this Butler Bulldogs last season. As Mack is on the fire here early on in this first half, eight quick points for the junior. And if you think Butler's got confidence, why not? They're eight and one in their last NCAA tournament games. The only loss was in that finals against Duke last year. They come in here with great momentum. Macklin posting up again, jump hook one more time, rattled in, and out. Matt Howard with another rebound. You'd like to see Macklin go more towards the basket, really put pressure on the D instead of settling for the long jump hook. Who's moved from the five position to the four position this season for Butler and his perimeter skills really, really terrific. As Van Zant turns the corner, lets it fly. Oh, well, looking at the Florida Gators defense, Parson is really playing center field. He's roaming off Stagall. Stagall's gonna have to look to, for his offense a little bit more to keep Parsons honest. Great matchup, Irving Walker and Van Zant. Walker has a terrific ability to get to the basket and a whistle. A foul coming up, and it will go against the Bulldogs. Well, you talk about physical defense. Matt Howard, the most physical of all the Bulldogs, and he does a terrific job of fronting, but that time he wrapped his arms around Macklin, and that's why he was called. So Howard picks up his first foul. Now Walker, deep jump shot. High rebound, Van Zant rebounding it at the free throw line. Defensive rebounding is going to be key for the Butler Bulldogs. Another great matchup, Howard and Parsons. Deep in the corners to go. Partially blocked by Walker. And here comes Boynton. He'll push it hard into the front court. He's got Walker deep in the corner, finds it. And knocked out of bounds. Shelvin Mack, though, guys, cooking to start this game. Well, he certainly is getting good looks. And he's playing with confidence right there, just pulls up and knocks one down. And then a pass from Van Zandt. And finally here, he just takes it upon himself to shoot it over three guys. That's when you're playing with confidence. Now you see how small Butler is with Matt Howard and Stagall going to the bench. You bring in freshman Kyle Marshall as well as, as, well as Ronald Norwood as Macklin gets his second bucket to go in the paint for the Gators. And that's more aggressive going to the basket, as we mentioned the last time. It's kind of a little fadeaway jump hook that time. He took it there with some heart. 
Norad in the game. He comes off the bench this season as you mentioned, Reggie, after starting in the national championship game last year, but he plays the same kind of minutes. Smith missing, Parsons. Here comes Chandler. Terrific pass, almost traveled. But it's a good decision to pull up. They didn't have numbers. Very dangerous when Parsons gets the rebound. He's the one that can go length to length. Macklin, clear space, cross the lane again, and it goes down. So obviously oh, Macklin oh, feels that he can take Smith when he gets it inside. Rather obvious, huh? <laughs> 15.05 to play in the first half. Watch live video and get real-time box scores, stats, and social media updates during the game on your iPhone or iPad with the NCAA March Madness On Demand app. For details, go to mmod.ncaa.com. Game tied at eight here in the first half. And Vernon Macklin has played extremely well. Well, we told you Vernon Macklin, Alex Tyus, they were going to attack inside against Butler. And you see Macklin going to that right shoulder with the jump hook. Three times he's gotten it down, and the last two have been very aggressive moves to the basket. Well, you sub out Vernon Macklin, and you come in with the true freshman in Patrick Young. Not as, not as skilled offensively, but can really pound the offensive glass and block shots. Ball picked up. Van Zandt, jump stop, fire. Off the heel. And Tyus with another rebound. And here comes Boynton galloping into the front court. Runs a pick and roll with Patrick Young. Also in the game, Scotty Wilbekin, a freshman from Gainesville for Florida. Wilbekin playing some nice defense on Jimmer for depth. Inside, Parsons babied it. Loose ball picked up by Van Zandt. Yeah, Parsons had a mismatch with Van Zandt guarding him. Parsons at 6'8", 6'9", several inches, but he didn't go hard. Baseline, Marshall with first lane with the left hand. And it goes down plus one. Well, he is left-handed. And what a quick move on the baseline here by the freshman, Marshall. Nice pass there by Mack. One dribble to use that back of the backboard. Excellent pass there by Mack. One dribble, takes the contact. Good concentration there. So Kyle Marshall, freshman from Davie, Florida. Doing a nice job coming off the bench during this tournament as he misses the free throw. And Norad chasing it out of bounds. Marshall had six points and six rebounds in that controversial win over Pitt. Had three offensive rebounds in their second round win over Old Dominion. When you talk about Marshall, he's averaging almost a little bit over three offensive rebounds per game. Shooting the ball pretty well, and so he's coming off the bench, giving Butler some firepower. A chance to talk to Kyle Marshall and Sean Van Zandt, both being from the state of Florida. I think they're really pumped up to play the Gators today. Weren't highly recruited, if at all, by Florida. Want to make a statement. Young, cross the lane. Macklin grabbed it, kicked it out. Parsons, downtown. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, you can tell where his comfort level is. Chandler Parsons. What a game against BYU. Almost a triple-double. 16 points, 9 rebounds, 7 assists. I told you yesterday he was a jack-of-all-trades. Can do a little bit of everything. Showing his range right there. Now, don't forget Monday on the Late Show. Don't miss Jack Hanna's Wild Animals. Game's all new Monday with... Th that guest and then catch Craig. One point game, 11 to 10. Gators. Look, we still haven't seen Matt Howard get on track offensively here for Butler. You know, I would expect him to screen, pick and pop, so to speak, utilize his ability to shoot outside with Vernon Mackley guards. Howard, deep jump shot, rims off. But I like it because there's no way that Patrick Young is going to get lost in a lot of those pick and pop situations. Diagonal pass, Wilbegin. And Macklin really wants the basketball. He's got Marshall on his back now. They give it to the big fella. And he wants to wave Wilbegin away. Another jump. Oh, no. 
That one will count and the foul. Well, again, take a look at that left shoulder. You got to get there and you got to establish yourself there before he makes the move. Man, how many times are we going to see Macklin go over that left shoulder? Certainly Brad Stevens is going to have to make an adjustment here as he goes back to his sophomore center, Andrew Smith, off the bench. What is the defender supposed to do to make him go or make him change direction? Well, he's got to get almost exaggerate on that left shoulder so there's no way Macklin can turn into the paint. And if he goes the other way, you got to bring some help underneath on a double team. They are doubling him when he gets there. He's been trying to recognize it and do something based upon what the defense does. But this time, you just didn't get there in time, and you got to do that. 14-10, so you see the strategy of Billy Donovan. He wants to go inside early and often. Now they're in a 2-3 zone. They've had man-to-man -man disguised as a 2-3, so Butler's really taking their time trying to identify the defense. Eight to shoot. Mack gives it up. Oh! He fired it. He elbowed Wilbekin right in the nose. Right in the grill of Wilbekin. And smart move here by Shelvin Mack, understanding that the shot clock is running down. One little pump fake gets Wilbekin off his feet. Mack does the right thing. You see the body coming at you. You just go right through and rip it through right with your chest and shoulder. Now, if Wilbekin had both feet on the ground, that would have been an offensive, offensive foul, foul because absolutely. Mack would have interfered with the rule of verticality so to speak but like you mentioned nice job good identification but mac also sending a message to the freshman back up sharp elbow for the senior as he struggles from the free throw line on this trip you did that a couple of times how, reggie how important are free throws going to be in this game you know both this is a 73 percent free throw shooting team Butler is you're not going to get very many chances because Florida they fouled the least in Division one basketball only 14 times a game got to take advantage when you get to the charity stripe Chase DeGaulle checks in for Butler Mackle catch a blow 14 11 Gators Walker brings it in the front court with Boynton Walker Boynton very patient offensively Where's the scoring gonna come for Butler with Mack and Howard on the bench Walker way short Andrew Smith with the rebound you know, Sean Van Zandt Offensively be a little bit aggressive 11 44 to play in the first half 14 11 Gators Florida with a 14-11 lead here in the first half. And now the Powerade sideline report. Let's join Marty Snyder. Well, guys, when Kenny Boynton of Florida is looking for a little basketball advice, he calls his childhood friend and AAU teammate Brandon Knight. They text or talk pretty much every day. In fact, they talked this morning for 20 minutes. And how good has Brandon Knight been in this tournament? Two game-winning shots, a career-high 30 against West Virginia. In their 20-minute conversation this morning, it said, you know what, I did it last night. It's your turn today. But I asked. Kenny, what he likes most about the conversations, he said his basketball IQ is just so good. That's what helps me see things I don't see on the court, Gus. Well, his basketball IQ, Marty, is so good because his IQ in general is so good. He had a 4.0 grade point average, Brandon Knight, his first semester at Kentucky, and he's already academically a sophomore after taking all the honors classes in high school. Huh. And the rebound goes to the Gators. Here comes Boynton, along with Parsons. Eric Murphy in the game right now for Florida as well. Talented sophomore, Boynton. Step back jump shot, long rebound picked up by Norin. Butler getting absolutely nothing in the paint. And out of bounds as Norin, over dribbling, turns it over. Masters Live streams exclusive video of A-Man Corner 15 and 16 and featured group. For more, go to cbssports.com slash masters and masters.com. How great of a coach Reggie Miller is Brad Stevens. He's an unbelievable coach. You know, everyone talks about you know, him being one of the up-and-coming young coaches. How about him being one of the best coaches in America? That's what I like to hear. You know, they said that Billy the Kid was had that same title. Both of these guys understand their teams, their systems, 
and they get it done. Meanwhile, Ty is aggressive, gets to the basket. We talk about offensive diversity. You get Vernon Macklin on the bench, who is pretty successful in the paint. You can turn to Alex Tyus, who on the block right there is showing his touch. And this is where Florida has their advantage. Two pretty good post players who are on top of their games right now. Largest lead of the game now for Florida. You're surprised, guys, that they're playing zone here? Well, now, they're, they're keeping Howard and Smith out of the paint and everything's been from the outside. Norad, deep jumper. That's a brick, rebounded inside. Here's Howard, and he misses the layup, but draws the foul. Garrett Butcher with a nice rebound inside, and let's take a look at Vernon Macklin. And then you can appreciate this. Florida early going down to their center, Vernon Macklin. Only nine points against BYU, but nine already today, early on in this first half for Florida. Yeah, and the success Butler had against Wisconsin had a lot to do with their physical play, particularly down low. Right now, that advantage is gone as Florida is exercising their advantage, utilizing their bigs very well. Both free throws good. Howard who saved the day a couple of times in this tournament against Old Dominion, hitting a game-winning shot at the buzz at the buzzer and then doing a similar job against Pitt with the game-winning free throw. Parsons off the dribble. Second time he short on it, gets his own rebound and sticks it back in. Well, that's the luxury you have with a guy that size who can play the guard position. Man, he was quick off his feet to get that offensive rebound. Already you can just tell the size difference is affecting Butler. Howard forced it up. Wow. And somehow got that one to fall. That's just plain old grit right there. Wasn't pretty, but he sure knows what he needs to do with it. The last two times, Butler's been very aggressive trying to get the ball inside to Howard. Macklin on the other box this time. Boynton deep jumper and a foul. Norred fouling him behind the three-point line. It's in a nice pump fake right here. And as you said, Lynn, Parsons short arms it, but gets his offensive rebounds. That's what the front line was going to focus in on. And look at this tough shot here by Matt Howard using the left hand in the paint. That's right, the defender had him. But again, it's the pure grit that Matt Howard plays with that allows him to get the ball up on the backboard. And Boynton, doing a nice job from the free throw line, 82% free throw shooter. Sophomore from Papano Beach, as you take a look at his numbers during the tournament. Three free throws good. Florida taking a 21 to 15 lead. Largest of the game, Van Zandt back in. Along with Mack. Van Zandt in the corner. And the rebound to Boynton. He's got Walker in the front court, cross court. Wilbekin for three. And Shelvin Mack with a rebound. Well, offensively, Butler is struggling. Very fortunate to only be down six points here. Eight minutes to go. Walker driving, cut off nicely by Howard. Now he'll find his man, Tyus, at the top of the key. Transition defense, a key, according to the Butler coaching staff. Well, you've got to get back because of the shooters of Florida. Macklin spinning now. He just went right through Butcher. 11 points for Vernon Macklin. He averages 11 on the season in Florida. Playing bully ball. 23-15 here in the first half. Howard wide open for three. Somebody missed him. And Tyus comes up with a rebound and a foul. 735 to play first half Gators Welcome back. Let's take a look at the game summary Well, when you look at this 
uh, of Butler and their shooting percentage. It took you from three-point range. You know the size of Florida is bothering them with their length. Gus Johnson, Reggie Miller, Len Elmore. So far, Lenny, especially when you look at what's going on in the front court, Florida has to be happy. They've been dominated. Well, that's where their strength is. When you only have one day really to prepare for a team, you really the rule of thumb is go to your strengths. And the strengths for Florida against Butler is their size inside, the skill that they've demonstrated, whether it's Macklin, Tyus, or Parsons. There's always some kind of a mismatch, either quickness or length. And these guys have been asserting themselves in that paint. Well, we talked about them at the top. They already have 20 of the 23 points here for the Gators. And I think Billy Donovan has made it a point to really abuse Butler down low because they don't have a lot of depth coming off that Butler bench. Gators with the basketball now. 7.33 to play in the first half. 23-15. Here comes Irving Walker. And watch Parsons. He's an incredible passer. Spins to the basket. Comes up short. And a foul. Chandler will pick up the foul. And that's his first. Forrest Whitaker stars in a new episode of Criminal Minds. Suspect behavior. Wednesday only CBS. And Howard doing an excellent job of rebounding the defensive end of the ball. Parsons had a couple point blank uh, looks. Hasn't seen him go down. Comes up with the steal. Here comes Parsons in the corner. Walker came up way short on his last jump shot from this area. Macklin, he's dominated right here again, and it's pure. No answer. You got to take that shoulder away from him, make him turn baseline. Well, he turned baseline, and he made that one, even though it was only that one bucket, but he was able to turn baseline for that little shimmy off the glass. Well, I was going to add, turn baseline, you got to have some help coming from underneath. Make him give up the ball and get yourself another chance to defend. But when he gets the ball down low inside, there's no answer. And beautiful jump shot, Zach Hahn. He's a 33% three-point shooter coming into this tournament. He had taken 129 threes, and that was a big one right there. Maybe Butler can get some momentum. Here's Macklin. Heat check time sends Walker away. He wants to go to work. Gets it again, and Walker throws it out of bounds. Well, finally, Andrew Smith fighting Macklin down low. And again, look at the position where Macklin is catching it. One dribble, and he's in the paint, finishing. And if anything, you want to force him baseline to shoot over his right shoulder. He's been very effective shooting over that left shoulder. And Reggie, they were prepared that time. If he turned baseline, Matt Howard ready to go there. Hahn was going to rotate down on his man, but it never happened. But they're prepared for it now. We'll see if they can execute. Zach Hahn, who hit the deep three. Mac, skip pass Hahn. And Zach penetrating. The floater is good. He's a slicer. And he cuts the Gators' lead to five. Van Zant with his first bucket. And that'll get the Butler faithful on their feet here in New Orleans. And you know what? Here's where the toughness comes in for Butler. We talk about him winning eight of the last nine NCAA tournament games. They know what it's like to be behind in a game like this. And they know how to come back. Mack with the rebound. He'll bring it into the front court. Hesitation to the basket and the foul. Basket will not count. Well, so far today, let's take a look at Matt Howard and Vernon Macklin and what they've done. You look at the comparison between the two of these guys, and obviously Vernon Macklin has gotten the better of this matchup, but there's a lot of game to be played right now. And Matt Howard, if he gets himself outside the three-point line, can drop some buckets there, maybe on the move, get into the paint, he might have some success. Yeah, if you're Brad Stevens, I would try to put Matt Howard in some more pick and pop situations to draw Macklin away from the hoop. I think Macklin has been very slow in closing the gap, especially when it's been Howard, if you can put him in a pick and pop situation. Yeah, pick and pop or get him on the move. High screen, go the other way, get down on the post, reverse the ball. As long as you make the defender move with you. 11 points for Matt. 25-22, 7 all run for the Bulldogs.
Inside, knocked away. Mack picks it up. Butler with numbers. Mack hard to the basket. Checked it out of bounds by Parsons. And Mack may have twisted his ankle. Yeah, as soon as he went around Walker, it looked like he got bumped a little bit. I don't know if it was an ankle or a knee. But you like the acceleration as Butler comes up with the steal. As soon as he gets by Walker right there, it looks like he just kind of tweaked his left ankle a little bit. Remember now, Andrew Smith against BYU early on in that second half twisted his ankle and was able to come back as Mack is able to walk off on his own. Looked like he did, it literally looked like he blew a tire trying Hope. to take off. Hopefully he could just walk that off or get retaped. Well, he's been the one guy that's been able to put the ball in the hole here in this first half for Butler. Now this is the time when you need that senior leadership from Matt Howard. Well, when you look on the floor for Butler right now, there's no one who can really create their own shot. So it's going to be about ball movement, execution, setting screens, and getting guys open. Van Zanto, very quick player, maybe the closest. Howard hits the deck, almost had it taken away, has it taken away, Boynton to the basket. Ah! The Gators can move when they want to, 27 to 22. And Gus, I would agree with you to some extent about Van Zandt, but right now he's running the point. He's got to get everybody involved. Forget getting everyone involved. With Matt going to the bench for that ankle injury, you've got to be aggressive offensively, especially with them doubling down on Howard. They need another scoring option. Hahn pulls it back inside Howard. But Hahn rises and hits. That's a guy. He can really stroke the basketball when he gets a clean look. And that's what I was talking about, getting people involved. They got to pop the ball around because against that zone, they don't have anybody that's going to break it down. 27-25, two threes now for Hahn. If you're Parsons and you got stuck all on you, try to get inside or at least go to the offensive glass. You have a five-inch tight end. Tyus leans in. Loose ball picked up, Van Zant. Here he comes. He can get to the bucket. Walker back on the hop. High off the glass short. And Tyus with the rebound. His fourth. Now Irving crossover oh. dribble. Oh, and he'll oh, go to the oh, line. Oh, oh, oh. Little fella. 322 to play first half. Gators up 27-25. Mac getting retaped. Hopefully he'll be back soon. Welcome back to New Orleans. Let's take a look at the tournament summary. Well, two SEC, SEC teams left. We talked about Kentucky and Brandon Knight. To me, DeAndre Liggins was huge off the bench for Kentucky. And the game following ours, Arizona versus UConn, Derek Williams mm. versus Kimba Walker, Whoa. who's been on fire over the last two, three weeks. Two. That is the game to watch. No doubt about it. Now Walker at the line. And he gets it first. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Villanova head coach Jay Wright joins Greg, Greg, Kenny, and Charles as a special New York studio guest. They will preview the West Regional Final between Arizona and Connecticut and have a Naismith watch presented by AT&T that's coming up on AT&T at the half. Both free throws good. Now Wilberkin back in the game. And for more on Shelvin Mack, let's go to Marty Snyder. Gus just talked to Ryan Galloy, the trainer for Butler. Shelvin Mack did twist his left ankle. They retaped it. Same exact procedure they did with Andrew Smith. Made him run in the hallway to make sure he was okay to put weight on it. Obviously back in the game. Now Mack with the ball right now. Howard back door. Nice player. Two-hand jam. Marshall getting up high. And Butler cuts the floor to lead to two. How about that pass over top there by Matt Howard? That's just a basic pick the picker. You love when your bigs can develop and pass with one another. Howard, excellent assist to Marshall. Boynton inside, and that's an offensive foul on Eric Murphy. Well, we told you Butler needs precise handling right there. And you take a look at the screen. He's going to start to the basket. Where's the rest of the defense? The screen right there, you see Parsons step out thinking that the ball is going to be reversed. And Marshall rolls to the basket unimpeded. Well, and the reason why Parsons got out of there is because Hahn has knocked down 
two long threes. So when Han started to come up and act like he was getting the basketball, that made Parsons react. But you, you never lose the basket. And a traveling violation against Van Zandt. Reggie, you're a shooter. You appreciate Zach Hahn's contribution in the first half. Well, what I like is he's really been able to stretch the floor with his three-point shooting. And it's instant offense off the bench between him and Ronald Norred for the Butler Bulldogs. And he certainly presents that threat. And I certainly agree with you about Parsons trying to get out there. But you never leave the basket naked until somebody is there to replace you. Speaking, smoking like a big man. Inside of the foul. <laughs> well, we had to. If I left it naked, I'd be on the bench right now. Oh, well, well, you, Lady, you, you played were... for Larry Brown. You know how Larry oh, was, yes. right? Oh, yes. So did I. Yeah. Everyone had to be on a string, though, according to Larry Brown. Second foul called on Matt Howard at the 218 mark here in the first half. So he takes a seat on the Butler bench. They throw it in the backcourt. Wilbekin guarded by Norrid. Macklin wants it again on the opposite box. Drop step, right hand again. Over that left shoulder, but on the opposite block. Well, he made a quick move on the baseline that time over that left shoulder, but he's all right-handed. And Butler's going to have to figure that one out. And a timeout called by Butler. 155 to play first half, 31-27, Florida. CBS cares. 155 to play in the first half, 31-27, Florida. Gators bringing a little bit of pressure now. Yeah, they're, they're after buckets. They're coming up with a bit of pressure. Obviously, like us, they witnessed the almost meltdown that Butler had against Wisconsin's press. Smith inside. And double dribble. It's a different kind of pressure that Florida is bringing. It's a three-quarter trap. And what they're doing is they're letting the ball come up the side of the court and trying to bring the other point guard around from the back side blind side to come up with the steal and I'm sure they'll, that's only one of several varieties that they'll demonstrate obviously they're testing them Macklin turns oh, rejected that time by Smith Tyus gets it though forced it up rejected by Smith again great job by Andrew Smith Mack a three and hits guess the ankle's okay huh Gus well his wrist is 31 to 30 I tell you what, Tyus never got that ball up. He would have much been better served by kicking it back outside and resetting. 14 points for Mack in the first half. Cutting the Florida lead to one. He's really favoring that left ankle, Shelvin Mack. How about Andrew Smith here? Comes up with the big block on Macklin, and then Tyus gets the offensive rebound and blocks it in. This leads to the fast break by Mack. Just walks into a three-point shot for 14 points. Well, he saw the 5'8", Irving Walker closing on him and figured, I can shoot over him. Butler on a 15-6 run. And Walker gets the first free throw to go. Florida shooting one and one. 17 fouls against the Bulldogs. 18 fouls against the Gators. Macklin checks out. What a fine first half for Macklin. 15 points. I tell you what, if you're Brad Stevens and the Butler Bulldogs, you look at Matt Howard with just four points, and he is average in this tournament, 17 points and eight rebounds, just four points in this half. And you're still one possession from tying this game. You got to be extremely happy. Now Mac, the inbounder, he finds Han. Han draws Parsons in the backcourt. And Mac gets it over the midcourt line. Yeah, that was a little token full court pressure, just to see what Butler will do in the event that Florida wants to deploy it again in the second half. It'll be awfully hard to press Butler, especially with the ball in Max's hands. He's so poised, so intelligent. Takes a three. Out of bounds. And Butler will hold on to it. 
Yeah. Be absolutely sure you get the last shot here in this first half if you're Butler. Florida has led in this first half by as many as 10 points. Billy Donovan's team getting off to a great start, especially with their inside game. Shot clock turned off now. Game clock at 12 for Van Sant. How wide open. Marshall rebound. And it's taken off. Walker, three-quarter court. And that's the end of the first half. 33-32. All right, this game is brought to you in HDTV by LG Life's Good. Start of the second half, Butler with the basketball. Bulldogs trail by as many as 10 in the first half, but they reeled in the Gators. Well, Billy Donovan talked about his team doing a better job on the boards. It's really going to come down to long shots mean long rebounds. The guards have to get involved in rebounding as well. Speaking of getting involved, let's see what Matt Howard can do. He'll take the jump shot. And tonight, or today rather, the shot just not there from long range. And there's a guard rebound, and Irvin Walker, the smallest guy on the floor underneath the basket. Now Macklin bumping, grinding, Parsons 16. And Andrew Smith hauls it in. Reggie, I, I'm looking at Chandler Parsons' jump shot, and it's been flat all day. He hasn't put any arc on it, hasn't given himself a chance to get really the ball in the basket. It doesn't even look like he's using his legs. It's like he's using all arms to shoot the basketball. Howard, again, this time deep in the corner, and it's pure. That's one way to slow Vernon Macklin down, make him play defense. Well, also, too, we talked about getting Howard in those pick and pops or getting him on the move. If you can get Macklin away from that basket area, uh, I think Howard has a good job of putting the ball in the basket. Howard with seven points. Boynton, Walker. Now Walker off the dribble, wraps it around. Tyus, short. Oh! Macklin again. Offensive rebound and stick back. What a game this man is having. 17 points as we start the second half. And here's the full court pressure. You knew Florida was going to apply it. Butler had so much trouble with it against Wisconsin. That was pretty much token, though. They haven't really trapped. Stegall, too strong. Parsons, long outlet pass. Walker stops, takes the three. And Matt Howard with the rebound. And Sam. Seagal just has not given Butler anything offensively. If you're Brad Stevens, you might have to there. Shove it back again. What a play by Mack. Lost it, got it back, and managed to muscle it in. If you're Brad Stevens, you may have to think about coming back with Hahn or Norred for Seagal. Alex Dias. Florida getting good looks, though as we start this second half. Andrew Smith with a nice block out that time. It's Butler more focused on blocking out. Ties with the rebound of the Mac miss. Here's Boynton. He'll pull up in transition. Quick in the end play. Quick shots here by Florida. Back-to-back -back possessions. I'm not quite sure that's what Billy Donovan wanted here. Butler doing a good job of rebounding the basketball. Inside Smith. Max step back three. Neither team with the touch as we start the second half. 16.45 to play. Butler by two. And this pace, who does it favor? Well, in the slow down half court, I'm going to go with Butler because you don't want to keep this game close. The way Butler's been winning these ball games in this tournament. Macklin again, 19 now. And he's been telling his teammates as they've been going up and down the floor, shooting long range shots to get me the ball. Inside, block and foul. Macklin tried to draw the charge. And that'll send Mack to the line. All right, Shelvin Mack right here, double team trapped, ball knocked loose, but he's the one that has a presence of mind of going after it. And Vernon Macklin inside once again. Trying to double him, but he makes a quick step into the paint and gets his offensive rebound. And that last foul right there, that's pretty close. Yeah, but he moved his feet just at the last minute there. Shelvin Mack did a good job of 
understanding that the trap was coming, keeping his head up and attacking the rim. Max, though, has had some problems at the free throw line. I'll tell you what, going back to taking that charge, you got to be all in if you're going to take a charge. You can't be halfway in, you know, and think that you're going to get the call. Wow. Yeah, put your body on the line. Mm. Shoving Mack three of seven from the free throw line. And on the season, he's an 80% shooter. Game stays tied at 37. Macklin posting up again. And a whistle and a push. And it will go against Andrew Smith. Andrew Smith with two hands on Macklin's back. That's an automatic foul call. So Smith picks up his first. And a sub coming into the game. Zach Hahn who hit a couple of threes in that first half. A senior from Newcastle, Indiana. Mack takes a seat. Doesn't look like that ankle is bothering him after he twisted it in the first half, had it retaped. Parsons. And a foul. Stegall trying to front the post. Fouling Macklin. 37 up. And let's take a look at some of the stars out west. These two young players are incredible. Derek Williams and Kemba Walker. Well, Kemba Walker's really been on the roll really the last three weeks. He's you missed anything. I think he's in that Jimmer category for player of the year. The way he's carried UConn the last three weeks. And Derek Williams, he was the one guy, especially in that first half, Duke had no answer for it, physically and mentally. Derek Williams, Pac-10 player of the year. Kimba Walker, Big East tournament, most outstanding player. Game tied at 37. Parsons finds Irving Walker inside Macklin again. And the jump hook goes down. Why not? Wow. Why not? Macklin with 21 points now. And Florida takes a two-point lead. Hahn, Van Zant, Howard, Mack, and Andrew Smith on the court for Butler. And Florida with that full court pressure looking to speed this game up because it works to their favor as Van Zant gets the roll. Beautiful teardrop for Van Zant. And it's funny how it's almost a requirement now as a guard to give you that Mark Jackson, your former teammate, teardrop if you're going to be able to play at a high level. Well, you've got the bigs always coming out and showing. And if you don't have that teardrop really to keep the defense on and honest, I mean, that's part of every guard's repertoire now. But, you know, we talked about Macklin in his 21 points. And he's the one offensively getting it done. But what has done, the two leading scorers for this Gators team, Boynton and Walker, really have been non-existent. Well, they've struggled from beyond the arc, which is where you would expect them to be, try to stretch the defense. But as long as they've got the inside game working, eventually they'll get some open shots and eventually knock them down. Inside! Oh! Explosion as he pounds it in 41 39. The bigs from Florida complete domination. And you talked about Boynton and Walker only four points for Irving Walker and five points for Boynton. But right now they don't need him. Van Zant driving again, kicking Han a three. Matt Howard. Deflecting it and Young claims a rebound. The Florida Gators, 16 of 35 from the field, 46%, one of six from the three-point line. Parsons again ties. Time out, Butler. Well, they're talking about the three-point shooting. You don't need it when you got penetration and the finish. Tyus on that end, and here Parsons on the penetration and finds Tyus flying on the sideline. And speaking about flying, chest bumps are happening. Two electric dunks. Well, really, it's been the front court players of Florida. They have 34 of the 43 points here for Florida. I think Billy Donovan is recognizing that he has mismatches inside for his team. No red back in the game for Butler. And the Gators get back into the zone.
Eight to shoot. Diagonal pass knocked out of bounds by Parsons. We talked about the front court scoring for the Gators. The tie looks like he's piggybacking his performance against BYU, but really Vernon Macklin and his size and his activity has just been a monster inside for Florida. But that's had to be for Florida because only one of six from beyond the arc. So that balance, inside out balance, isn't working, but the inside is dominating. Now Boyd the other way. Baseline, Parsons wide open. And the rebound goes to North. Once again, Parsons short on his shot, hitting the front of the rim. It looks very flat. I'm just wondering where is the offense going to come if it's not shoving Matt. Matt Howard has to be aggressive offensively. Oh, extra pivot off the glass. No, no rebound and a foul. But where's the offense going to come? Matt Howard, when he caught the ball and faced, he was 16 feet away from the basket and passed up a jump shot. Well, he doesn't have the quickness nor the leaping ability to battle the guys inside, particularly Patrick Young or Vernon Macklin. So he's had difficulty throwing off balance shots, but Florida's got to do a better job on the glass as Butler is tenacious on that offensive glass, particularly Kyle Marshall. Macklin picked up his third foul. Let's see if he stays in the game. So Marshall at the line. 55% free throw shooter. Now coverage of the Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues Sunday on ESPN. Regional semifinal action tips off at noon Eastern as the top seeded Connecticut Huskies face Georgetown in the Philadelphia region. And for more information on other matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. Florida now has gone a little bit smaller with Walker, Boynton, and Wilbekin as the perimeter players. Let's see if Billy Donovan Try to knock down some long range shots. He took 34 threes in that game against BYU. Macklin on the bench, and he's been their leader with 21 points. But let's see if he can do it now. Penetrating. Well, here's why they went small because now they're going to throw some pressure on with hopes of turning Butler over. 45 40. Stay in that 2 3 zone, but make sure they cover the shooters on the perimeter. The only way Butler really has been able to put points on the board. There's Howard open from that 16 foot range, and he's not even looking at it. Well, if I'm Howard, then I'm not going to shoot. Especially with the smaller and smaller game lineup. Go to the offensive glass. Five to shoot. Howard, deep jump shot. And that's not the shot you want. But that's the rebounding you want if you're Florida. Little guys get involved on the yeah. long shots. Boynton starting to heat up now. He's a very patient offensive player. He had five at halftime, nine points now. And the Gator fans on their feet. Howard. Mack, top of the key. Norrin keeps it alive in a whistle and foul. And this will go against... Florida. 11.33 to play. Second half. Florida with a seven-point lead. And him not being aggressive. Look where he catches the basketball right here. You've got to take that shot if you're Matt, How if you're Matt Howard. But no, you give it up to Norred, who is not a shooter. The ball comes back, and then you get forced against the shot clock, uh, forcing a 28-footer. If you're Matt Howard, you've got to be aggressive offensively. Well, he's had the length of Florida bother his shots, but this is no time for the faint of heart. Hahn goes up high. Nice job saving that ball from going out of bounds. Florida perimeter defense, very good. Inside Smith, back to Howard, quick release. Nothing going for Matt Howard now, a foul inside. Howard two for eight from the field, seven points. That didn't sound very good. Norway just getting underneath the legs of Chandler Parsons. Pretty dangerous right there as Norwich 
flew to crash the bucket but wound up right behind Parsons and there's nothing really he could do probably should have just been better off to step away. Well, defensively this is a critical possession here for Butler. Boynton almost lost it in an offensive foul call as Matt Howard takes the charge. And you wanted to bring up a point about Coach Stevens, Lenny. Yeah, well, I think Brad Stevens, uh, you would talk about how terrific a coach he is, which we're all in agreement, but I think he's an outstanding tactician. You know, considering, and, and let's face it, considering the talent by comparison and the teams that he's beaten in the past, he's always found a way not only to play to his strengths, but attack the other guy's weaknesses. And when you got that one day in between, uh, like the Sweet 16 and the regional finals to prepare, you know, you've got to have a good understanding of the other guy. A steal by Tyus. Shelvin Mack, rare turnover. And in the past, Brad Stevens has had success. This is one of those games right now where, you know, I think Florida, because of their talent, has gotten the better of Butler. Crossover dribble, Walker. Ball tapped around. Tyus gets the rebound, tied up. And the arrow in the favor of the Gators. And I say thus far, they've gotten the better of them. Still, seven-point game. We're talking about the struggles of Butler. They've missed their last 11 of 12 three-point attempts at 2-3 zone. And now the, this pressure is really affecting the Bulldogs. Well, the fact that you've got your bigs right now, Tyus and Young inside doing a nice job defensively, gives the perimeter guys for Florida a lot more confidence to go out there and extend. Now, the amazing race is off to India tomorrow, only CBS. Foul on the play called on Mac. That's his first. Fourth team foul against Butler. Florida has four team fouls as well. You see the mismatches out here. Mac getting caught on Patrick Young having to guard him. Patrick Young. You know they're not going to throw you the basketball down low to score, but try to beat him on the offensive glass. And now they switch back. But you're right. When that happens, Young just needs to get to the weak side glass. Tyus, one dribble to the basket and draws a foul. Really been impressed with Alex Tyus. His activity, his length. His ability to springboard and get second shot opportunities. Tyus at the line. He's a 62% free throw shooter. Now he's had himself one heck of a tournament. That 19 and 17 against BYU was invaluable because, you know, if you were just going to rely on backcourt versus backcourt, might have had a draw, but he made the difference. Good on both of his free throws. The lead grows to nine for the Gators. And here's the pressure stepped up. Florida really starting to rattle Butler. Foul called on that play. It will go against Parsons, his second. That's the weak side foul right there by Parsons on the arm of Howard. Back up the sideline. Takes a three. In and out. Young with the rebound. One and done, Butler. Florida can add to their totals now. In complete control of this game. As they wear down Butler. Walker turns the corner. Tyus driving. And in. You know, when you listen to folks in Gainesville over the last couple of years, they always talk about Alex Tyus underachieving. I don't know. He's reached his peak right now. He was playing outstanding basketball the way everyone expected him to play from the day he got to Gainesville. Mack tied up. A jump ball. The arrow in the favor of Butler. And we know the struggles of Butler, especially here in this second half, just hasn't been able to knock down the long range shot. They've been pitted up against the shot clock, the good defense by Florida. And I think, Reggie, the changing defenses of Florida has really disrupted 
the offense of this Butler team. Well, there's no question about it. They've gone from man to zone to zone that looks like man and vice versa that slows Butler's attack. Meanwhile, Matt Howard, maybe that's what he needs to do. He was a five last year, moved to four this season, but he really has a major, major impact when he gets the ball close to the basket. He knows how to score down there. Yeah, he, he caught Alex Tyus asleep right there. You know, when you're struggling offensively, especially from the perimeter, sometimes, as you know, you just get a quick little layup to kind of get your confidence going. Knocked out of bounds. Butler will get it again. Macklin picked up the foul. Now, let's pay attention. Macklin has now picked up his fourth foul. He'll head to the bench with nine minutes remaining in the second half. But as Reggie mentioned before, Florida, fewest personal fouls in the nation. And they haven't had one guy disqualified on fouls this year, which to me is amazing. Van Zant. And a foul coming up. This will go against Tyus. Now Matt Howard starting to go to the glass. And it's all the hustle of Matt Howard. We well, take a look at Matt Howard. It's kind of been a tale of two halves, not so much with the numbers, but with the effort. And Shelvin Mack, obviously, in the second half, I've got to believe that that ankle is bugging him, along with the pressure applied by Florida. So Florida picks up their 17 foul, 8.51 to play. One and one. Oh, that ball is tipped Smith. up and in. 51 44. Andrew Smith gets the credit, but I'm not so sure it wasn't Tyus who held that in. Parsons. Baseline. Tyus. Oh, he gets the ball. <laughs> Alex Tyus, what a game, 14 points to go along with eight rebounds, 53-44. 15-footer, Howard, that one partially blocked. But I like him being aggressive at that free throw line area. Now a little ball fake and put it on the floor might help the next time. Half court game here in the second half. Florida dominant. And an offensive foul is called against the Gators. Well, to me, where is Butler going to find the offense? This is a team that usually shoots close to 45% on the season, already 30%, 36% in this game. Really, Mack, Howard, this last 737 have to find a way offensively to put this team on its shoulders. How do they do it? Well, I like to pick and pop, but because of the changing defenses from Florida, it's been very difficult. And if I'm Florida, I sustain changing defenses, continue to extend the defense, look to trap when you could in the full court manner, but you get back in the half court, get into that 2-3 or man-to-man, -to -man, disguise, do whatever you can do to slow down. And nice block there by Tyus. Confused Butler. No look pass inside, man. Great job. Hopkins has come off the bench here for Butler, giving a little energy. Chris Sean Hopkins, 6'1 guard for Reg Indianapolis. Reggie and I were watching him during warm ups. He is some athlete. Well, he can fly. He can fly. Pointing inside. Short Smith with the rebound. 53 46. The winner of this game advancing to the final four. Mack the kick. And that one goes down. Hopkins off the bench. Where'd this kid come from? 53-49. They've got an energizer buddy percolating. Back after this. Well, he's gambling all right, and he might have pulled an ace out of his sleeve when you're talking about Hopkins with the impact he's had in just so few time, so okay. little time. Well, now you're talking about Brad Stevens and him knowing his bench. Inside Walker, changed the shot, offensive foul. Now the rhythm has gone out of the Florida attack. Matt Howard has taken some charges right in his chest today. And that's what I mean by being all in when you take a charge. 
And look at Hopkins right here with the no look to Howard. And then that zone buster right there, Hopkins on the down screen, showing that energy. Coach put me in. I want a little bit of this tourney action. As we said, Brad Stevens might have pulled an ace out of his sleeve. Billy Donovan didn't know he had that card. Hopkins, cross court, fans in. Attack. You got to attack the big on that. Hands it off. Hopkins. Almost turned it over. He did. Boykins tracks it down. And lays it in. I was just about to praise Hopkins for his patience in the backcourt against the pressure, and then in the front court, he rushes his pass. Well, he's a freshman. A lot of pressure coming in off the bench. Mack crosses over. Van Zandt, a three. And yes. the rope. 55-52. Butler coming back. The winner of this game advancing to the final four. In Houston, Tyus baseline. Oh, Parsons and a foul. So Mac called for the foul, and that'll send Florida to the line to shoot one and one. And this will be Young, well, Patrick a Young, a 73% free throw shooter. And what you saw from Florida right there, that's how you have to blunt this Butler attack. You've got to match their intensity. One and one. TV's number one drama is all new. Mark Harmon stars at NCIS Tuesday only CBS. Well, I'll tell you what, the dribble penetration of Butler has picked up over the last few minutes, and that's how you've got to attack Florida, especially when they're in that zone. Shelva and Matt can continue to get into the paint, find Van Zant and Hopkins. These guys can knock down shots. Well, one of the things that's enabled them to penetrate has been the full court pressure, and they get a running start. I kind of wouldn't have expected Billy Donovan to keep the pressure up, instead get his defense back, but he knows better than I do. That's why he's sitting there, and I'm sitting here. 57-52, 5.20 to go, largest lead in the second half, 11. Van Zandt, another three. Smith keeps it alive. And reach and follow Walker. And that'll send Andrew Smith to the line to shoot. So Irving picks up his third. Andrew Smith, a 69% free throw shooter. First trip today. We'll see how that foul affects the aggressiveness, particularly on the on-ball kind of defense by Walker. Remember, we said before, nobody from Florida this year has been disqualified on personal fouls. And what a job for Hopkins as he checks Absolutely. out of the game for Butler. He brought energy. High fives all around. Indianapolis City Player of the Year. Manual High School. Free throw line. Too many misses here for Butler in this game. Normally a pretty good free throw shooting team. All the little things if you want to advance that you're going to have to do They're on a seven, nightly basis. Exactly. They're 7 of 16 from the free throw line today. 57-53. Their defense, though, picking up. Boynton driving. And loses it out of bounds. Last touch by Norrid. But on both of the guards of Florida, the defense by Norrid and Van Zandt has been outstanding. Walker can't get a clean look. And then here, Boynton couldn't turn the corner on Norrid as he had quick feet and took the baseline. Remember, Macklin picked up those four fouls, had to sit. Now he's back in the game, calling for the ball. Look down low. He's got... Mack on him. Walker, no. Batted around. Tracked down Van Zandt. 57-53. Florida stays in the 2-3. Can't settle now. This is when you've got to be aggressive. And another foul. Offensive this time foul. it's offensive against Andrew Smith. Andrew Smith, his third. Yeah, those are the kind of fouls that'll drive a coach nuts. 
You got good position right now. Watch him put his hand around his back on oh, the hook. Oh, come on. You can't do it. Come on. You can't do it. You got to call what you see. Come you on now, man. Out, you sit down on it, and you spread out with your arms. You don't have to reach behind and hook him. You got it. He, that's not a hook. That's him getting position. But not with your hands behind the guy's back. He's according to John cool. Adams, according to John Adams, a foul is a foul. You call what you see. You call what you see. Let these kids play. Let them play. Let them decide. Let, let them play fundamentally sound, though. And that's not fundamentally sound. Walker gets a timeout as he hits the deck. 3.56 to go in the second half. 57, 53, Gators 10 on the shot clock. Three minutes and 56 seconds away from advancing to the final four for the fourth time under Billy Donovan. But can they hold on is the question. Parsons short again. Rebounded by Mack. Mack's gonna penetrate. He's got Walker. Oh, the Euro step, it goes. He just went right around him, Reggie. Manu Ginobili right now has just fallen off his couch. 3.34 to go. Butler climbing the ladder. 57-55. Walker drives, stops, pumps, rolls on, rebounded Smith. And here come the Bulldogs. They can tie it with the deuce. Take the lead with the three. That bad shot by Parsons was the first pass leading to Butler's fast break. It's a cautionary tale. You can't afford bad shots. Mac changing gears. And we're tied at 57. Three minutes to play. Three minutes to decide a final four spot for these two teams. Gus, there is zero quit in these Butler Bulldogs. Macklin, now he gets to touch it. He's been awesome. And a reach-in foul on Smith. And he will go to the line now, but look at Matt. The back using that Manu Ginobili long step at the end. And then on the high pick and roll with Howard, gets all the way to the cup. Brad Stevens showing the energy, saying it's time. Our time is now. <laughs> Butler, nine team fouls. Florida 10, so both teams going to the line, all fouls. Macklin at the line, and he's a free throw shooter, and it hovers in the 40s. 44%, and the guys in Atlanta, this is gonna come down to free throws. Butler has struggled all today at the free throw line. Now you're sending one of your worst free throw shootings for Florida to the line. Macklin gets the first, he's two of two today. And that presents a problem for Billy Donovan. You got a 46% free throw shooter who, in fact, is your team's leading scorer today. Down the stretch, if it comes down to free throws, you know, do you leave him in? You got to go offense, defense? Well, I ask you, do you hack a Mac? Well, that's my point. Billy Donovan may want to just put him on the defensive end. 58-57. And then sub on the offensive end, but he's so valuable on the offensive end. So that's a, that's a dilemma that he's going to have to wrestle with. I see Patrick Young over at the scorer's table. Here's Mack, 17 to shoot. Howard hands it off. Van Zandt curls down the lane. Norit slashing, lost it. Loose ball, Macklin with it. To Boynton. How about that hustle by Tyus? Now Boynton double team. Two minutes to go. Florida up. Macklin again! Why didn't they foul? 46% free throw shooter about to dunk the ball. You don't let him get it to the basket. 16-57. Macklin with 24. Mack, pick and roll. He's got Macklin on him. He backs him up. Crosses him over to the bucket. And foul. Here we have Vernon Macklin. We talked about a 46% free throw shoot. Right there, you got to foul, not let him get it up over his shoulders. Make him earn it from the line. Smith has fouled him before. <laughs> I'm surprised. Mm. Ooh, look at Mack do some dancing out top on Vernon Macklin. Inside out dribble. 
And the flip side of that is Mack had the ball at the top. I'm surprised Parsons didn't come over and double to try to get the ball out of his hands because Norrid was about eight feet off of the three-point line. Well, now, see, now I don't agree with Billy Donovan taking out Vernon Macklin because you're going to be getting the basketball at the offensive end. But that's where they're going to foul him if he gets his hands on the ball. Second free throw for Mack is good. 24 points Vernon Macklin has. I know, but... It, I think Billy now recognizes that was an opportunity for Butler to foul him. They didn't. He knows that they probably will again if he gets his hands on the ball. Rely on your other offensive players to hold the fort. 60-59. Florida holding on to the lead. A minute 17 to go for a trip to the final four. Boynton, he's been a clutch shooter all season, as well as Walker, eighth to shoot. Walker crosses over, can't get there, leaves it off the heel. Oh, and the rebound to Mack, under a minute to play. Here comes the senior. 50 seconds to go. And this is Matt Howard time. How about the outstanding defense on Walker by Nora, though? Van Zandt. 40 seconds. Pick and pop with Matt Howard. Mack backs it up. And a timeout. Mm. All right, Mack will inbound the ball with Howard, Smith, Hahn on the floor as well, and Van Zandt. Tyus guards the ball, nine to shoot, and a timeout. 33.7 to play. Huge possession coming up for Butler. Florida with two. Neither team with the foul to give. 60-59. This kid has been incredible. Mack, he's got a cut. It looks like on top of his left eye. He'll serve as the inbounder. Nine on the shot clock. Howard to the basket. No! And Reggie, you said get the ball to Howard. This is Matt Howard time to put back against Old Dominion. To know to get fouled on the free throw in the pit game. And now Billy Donovan is going to try to ice Matt Howard. 30.7 to play for a trip to the final four, folks. The game reset. The arrow, folks, favoring Florida. Each team with the timeout. Butler at the free throw line, their best player. How big right now are these free throws by Matt Howard? You want your seniors in positions like this to lead your team. I'll tell you another reason to give it to Matt Howard is that Matt Howard is a foul magnet. At the line for the tie. And the reason he's a foul magnet, when he goes to the basket, he's got arms flying, legs flying. Somebody's going to make contact. Now Howard, game tied at 60. For the lead. Oh, he missed it. 28 seconds to go. Billy Donovan has a timeout. He's got to take his time. Irving Walker, the Brooklyn board point guard, who's been incredible. Getting to the basket, 10 to shoot. Seven to shoot. It's gonna be all Walker. Five! Walker lets it go! And we overtime. So Tyus and Howard will jump it up. And the toss and the tap controlled by the Gators. Macklin. Walker, Boynton, Tyus, and Parsons for Florida. Norrid starts overtime for Butler but with Howard Mack. We'll look, for, look for both Smith and Howard to try to draw charges. And a foul inside. Boynton getting into the lane and draws contact. He'll go to the line. Well, I was going to say try to draw charges on Vernon Macklin, but Macklin nowhere to be found staying away from the problem. And then the quickness right there, Kenny Boynton getting into the paint. And Alex Smith is, excuse me, Andrew Smith has fouled out of this game. That's his fifth. And it shows you how big that reach-in foul, as well as that hook from behind, 
how big a role that has played in this game is those are two fouls I'm sure Andrew Smith wishes he could have had back. Now you're asking a freshman in Kyle Marshall to try to keep off arguably the hottest player on the floor for the Gators and Vernon Macklin with 24 points. Four rebounds and giving sure up three or four inches. I'm sure the instruction to Marshall was you play him on defense. Make sure you establish position and we don't mind if you take a charge. Boynton missing the first. And he gets the second Florida with the lead to start overtime and now they pick up full court. The pressure caused Butler some problems in the second half. Nord and Mack in the backcourt. And the Gators get back into the zone. Mack, cross court. Norin. Block. Marshall dumps it. Howard, reverse layup, and it goes. Marshall's been fantastic on the offensive glass for Butler in this tournament. Yeah, we came in averaging a three plus in the three tournament games, and today he's done a terrific job. This is fifth offensive rebound. Tyus driving, pulling. Macklin rebound and a foul. Well, Nord with the jump shot. Tyus with a nice block there, but it goes right into Marshall's hands and a terrific pass on the streaking. Matt Howard on the baseline. You like the way these guys play together, man. Presence of mind to find the open man. And this man has to hit free throws. Well, here's why Billy Donovan had that dilemma. Do you keep him on the floor? I guess so. Looks pretty good right there. Good follow through there. I was going to say the only, thing, the only thing that looked good, Reggie, was it coming through the net. <laughs> Otherwise, that line drive shot, if it's not dead on, that's going nowhere. Well, you got to be sure you box out here. You can't give up second shot opportunities. One of two, game tied at 62. As Norrid walks it up the floor with Van Zant, Mack, Marshall in for Smith, who fouled out. And Matt Howard. Matt Howard Remember, time. Macklin has four fouls. Inside, rebound, Marshall again. Oh, oh, oh. Look at him crash! The offensive glass! And he'll go to the line to shoot one. Kyle Marshall has been huge for Brad Stevens and the Butler Bulldogs off the bench. The shot there by Mack, keeping the ball alive. Second and third, multiple efforts on the glass for Marshall. And let me say this, with all due respect to Andrew Smith, I think that Kyle Marshall is the right guy for this type of game at this point in time. And, you know, maybe it was fortuitous that he did foul out and Brad Stevens had no choice but to put Marshall in. You need somebody that's going to clean up the misses. And Kyle Marshall is doing just that. Kyle Marshall from Davie, Florida. I talked to him yesterday about Florida not recruiting him. He's like, Reg, I have a chip on my shoulder. It would have been nice to stay home and play. But Butler, this is a great opportunity for me, and I want to show them what they missed out on. And he makes the free throw. Butler with a 65-62 lead in overtime. This game tied at 60 at the end of regulation. Irving Walker had a chance to win it for the Gators, but his three-point shot not on the mark. 14 to shoot. Boynton, pick and roll. And a foul. Marshall trying to hedge and he put his hand on him and Florida goes to the line and we talk about Kyle Marshall look at the intensity after that offensive rebound and making it this man that's what it's about play, man. Baby. this is what it's all about but again silly fouls by Butler you talked about Andrew Smith the little wraparound you know cheap foul and then you know, 40 feet away from the basket, you, you, you give up a foul, and you're sitting one of Florida's best free throw shooters and going to the line. Yeah, right. you can have intensity, but it's got to be controlled intensity. 65-64, both free throws good. Three minutes in OT. 
the winner to advance to the final four in Houston, Texas. Butler went oh, to the national championship it. game last year. Trying to get back there. Norrin to the hole, crosses over and is tackled. Norrin doing a good job of attacking the bigs, as we call this. Look, he gets into the lane. Tyus doesn't even know he's behind him. Going right up his back. 2.43 to play in overtime, 65, 64, Butler. We're in overtime in New Orleans, 65, 64, Butler with the lead as you take a look at the game reset. See the timeouts remaining for both teams, both teams shooting the double bonus. But if you're Billy Donovan, you've got to go back inside. That's where you clearly had the advantage throughout this game. Lloyd, first free throw good. 66-64. Here's a young man that understood it was about team losing his starting job. They needed him to come off the bench. And he just hit two big free throws. Unselfish. You know, a name that we haven't heard all evening, Chandler Parsons. Only five points, two of nine. But he's hit some big shots in his career. SEC Player of the Year this year. Walker. A lot of dribbling. Somebody's open if he's being double teamed. Marshall and Nord. Kicks it out. Boynton for three. Yeah! Yes! Yeah. tied 67. Dribbling up and down the court. Trying to find an angle to hit the open man. <laughs> 209 to go. 67-67. These kids landed all on the line, folks. They want to get to Houston. Norrid. Knocked away. Scramble and foul. Wow. How many real, I, I, I hate to say this, but these have been some bone-headed fouls by both ends. Parsons does a good job of getting his hand on the ball right there. But if you're Walker, you can't come in from the from the weak side, and Lynn, you called it. If you're being double team and you attack the basket, someone has to be open. Horton does a great job here of stepping in to the three to tie this ball game up. I'm not sure Walker saw Boynton until he got up in the air and started looking for people. That's okay, he saw him when he counted. Four fouls on Walker. Lloyd hits the first. Butler back on top, 68-67. This all for a chance to move on to Houston, guys. Both free throws good again. Norrin coming up big in crunch time. Well, that's what that team is all about. Remember, 8-1 and one in their last nine tournament games. This team knows how to win in this environment. Walker, three. Ah! Baby! Florida, 70-69. 132 to play in OT. And Florida's won 13 of their last 15. I think they know how to win, too. Now, Mac up top. Answers. <laughs> <laughs> this is an old fashioned shootout for a chance to move on to the final four. 72 70. Butler out of five. Just when you thought it was safe to come out of the water, if you're a butler, the Gators strike. And then Mac attack right here again, just sizes him up at the top of the key. Nice job there taking his time. Knew Patrick Young wasn't going to come out on him. So Walker at the line, a 78% shooter. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. Pressure and pipes, what do they say? <laughs> what do they say? <laughs> and he gets a second. 72-71. 107 to play in overtime. Oh, plenty of time if you're Florida. You have to play good defense right here. You cannot gamble. This game tied at 60 at the end of regulation. Van Zandt. Look at the switch with Matt Howard 
with Walker guarding Matt Howard. And a timeout call by Butler. Boy, if they go to this pick and roll and they are switching with Matt Howard, Matt Howard has to ask for the basketball down low. Mack, the inbounder, finds Van Zandt, dangerous pass. 18 to shoot, Norad. Well, they're in a 2-3 zone right now, so the pick and pop, pick and roll is out of the question. Norad to Mack. Pump fake downtown, a brick. Rebounded by the Gators. Shot clock turned off. Billy Donovan's got a timeout, and he burns it here. With 29.2 to go, Gators down by one with the rock. Back after this. Florida with the ball, shot clock turned off. 29.2 to go. And Billy Donovan, the reason why he called that timeout is he wanted to get his shot maker, Irving Walker, back in the ball game. And if you're Donovan, you play for the last shot. Even though you're down one, you go I would say at about seven or eight seconds, because if you miss, you get a chance to foul or offensive rebound. Well, that's an awful lot of trust in Irving Walker. He's one of nine from the field today. Here's Walker, turns the corner, hands off, Boyton to three! <laughs> Tipped around! Tyus! Matt Howard grabs it! A scramble, and the arrow favors Butler! Wow. And but we all knew who would come up with that rebound, loose ball. Matt Howard. I would have thought Florida would take a little more time since the shot clock was off. They're down one with the ball. They control their own destiny. A 35-foot jump shot with 13.9 seconds left. Well, he had just hit his last shot. Boynton, but 72-71, still a one-possession game, even with two free throws. And we know Butler has had problems getting the ball in. We, we saw that surge that Wisconsin did late. Mack, the inbounder. Tyus guards the ball. One steal and a foul. You got to extend this ball game. They throw it. Matt Howard, keep away now. And a foul. Uh, there's no way, no way you're going to get you know a what? shot like that. But it's the smartest move to make. Because as soon as you see the guy coming, Sheldon Mack did the right thing. And they're only going to give him two free throws. But he has struggled from the line this evening. Five of nine for Mack. Well, they knew it was going to happen. Why isn't this three shots? Why isn't that three shots? Because. <laughs> because he's the, <laughs> tell me why. He, because he didn't get the ball up in the act of shooting until after he was fouled. Pretty one. simple. I'm good. 10.6 to go. 73-71. Shelvin Mack, the senior leader with Matt Howard of this Butler Bulldog squad. Florida out of timeouts. Second free throw good. 74-71. Gators need a three. I think the, the clock started before Walker touched the basketball. They're going to reset the clock. And if you're Brad Stevens, now a guard has to be up with Walker or Boyton so he can't run time off the, off the clock by letting the ball just roll up. Take a look at the clock. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely started. started, yeah. Good catch by the officials. And for Florida, Irving Walker, a 39% three-point shooter. Boynton, a 33% three-point shooter. Parsons, a 37% three-point shooter do you if you're Billy Donovan or excuse me if you're Brad Stevens do you foul here we go Walker lets a three go no Parsons Kevin O'Donnell Butler Boynton the Bulldogs do it again Butler down by as many as 11 coming back and they're headed to Houston 74 71, the final.